What's up, everybody? Welcome back to yet another vlog. How many times do I say that every time I vlog? Anyway, with that being said, I'm here at my grandma's house right now. I actually got to cut the grass. It has been a super rainy, snowy, cold week, all of the above pretty much for winter, spring transition, and winter holding on longer than it should. Anyway, you guys get the old idea. I already did a video on that. But what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be taking you guys along for the process today, showing you guys my grandma's lawn, as well as maybe a couple other things we're gonna be doing. So yeah, anyway, let's take a look at it. Okay, so for those who've been around for a while, you guys know this is my grandma's house here. She's sitting on about an acre here of turf. And as you'll see, coming out of winter into spring, we're about into mid-spring, I'd say right now. The grass is oh so green. You really can't see it from this side, so let me go ahead and turn that around just to show you. Look, neighbor's lawn, grandma's lawn. Still hasn't had any fertilizer, weed control, pre-emergent, or anything to kickstart it. This is all running off of last year's fertilizer that we put down back in November, and as you can see, it's looking good. Now, we do have a little bit of clover in here. That's been a reoccurring issue for a while here, so it's going to take a little bit to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and break out the trimmer. And I'm just going to trim around the lawn, make sure there's no wet areas or, you know, tight spots or anything like that where the mower might get stuck because I do cut this with a zero turn and I do not want to risk that. But uh, it needs to be cut. And if I don't cut it today, it's not going to get cut for another couple of days because based on the weather forecast, it's going to rain for I don't know, the next two, three days or so, and I cannot have that. This lawn needs to get cut. Otherwise, it's gonna be up to my knees the next time I'm here and gotta get it cut. Let's do it. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like geek to freak right now, right? I'm gonna break out the trimmer. Yeah. I'm gonna trim along the edges. Yeah. Sorry, man, big fan. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I'll get to the mowing. In case you guys missed it, Echo sent me this as part of our program as well as the gloves. Thank you. I gotta say, I'm really in love with this unit. I like it. Adds a little more power. And uh, fun fact, that trimmer head right there is actually from my PAS225. So I guess it just goes to show if you're looking to mix and match um, attachments between higher and lower end units, they're pretty much going to work. As long as they fit in the shaft, you're good to go. All right. Here we go. As you can see, we are kicking off our first cut of the season here at my grandma's house with a little bit of trimming. Now, typically, one of the ways I've talked about mowing your lawn in the past is to mow first and then you can do all the legwork later. But one of the things I've been experimenting with recently is the idea that when you get all the legwork out of the way, you get to kind of enjoy and rejuvenate yourself afterwards on the mower. I don't know if it's just me, but I've been doing it that way. I guess I've been watching a little too much top-notch lawn care on YouTube. Love my buddy Brian over there. But one of the things he's prefaced is get all the legwork out of the way and then you can kind of enjoy um, sitting on the mower and rejuvenating yourself before you have to blow off. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Doing a little bit of trimming in the backyard here. This is across the bridge that my grandma has. Again, very cool property with well over an acre here. Trimming around this stump that we definitely need to rip out. This is actually, fun fact about these stumps here, these are from cherry trees that my grandma used to have back here. My, my half grandfather was alive. We used to pick cherries from that and had some very fond memories of that, but you know, with time, trees age and sometimes they don't make it and that's what happened over here. Now, in this one particular spot right here, you see we still have a stump, whereas over here where I'm about to trim, you can see we actually have a hole in the ground from where the other cherry tree was. So, just trimming around that spot right there to make sure that we don't, you know, get the mower tire stuck in there because I've had plenty of unpleasant experiences with that and I want to prevent that. So. Here's where we're really gonna get into things. So as you can see, I'm getting ready to trim alongside the creek. Now, as I mentioned in the title of this video, the lawn is fairly wet. And because of that, the last thing I wanna risk, especially considering the fact that I am going to be mowing it with a zero turn, is the fact that it can get stuck in the creek. This has happened numerous times 
Um, unfortunately, I haven't gotten any of, them, any of them on video, otherwise you guys know I'd probably replay that, but I've had lawn tractors get stuck here. I've had, or I've had a lot of stuff get stuck here, um, dating back to, again, when my half-grandfather was here. But anyway, with that being said, as you can see, um, what I'm doing is I'm making a little outline here alongside of the creek. So I'm, I already did my outline about three, four feet away from the creek, so then that way I'm establishing like a border as to how far I need to trim. Which, by the way, I gotta say, the Echo uh, 2620 that I'm using here, plenty of power, freaking love it. Um, just trims really smooth. Now, this head that I have on here, as I mentioned, it's from my PAS 225, and the fact that I can, you know, mix and match between the two units, especially considering that they're lower and higher ranked, that's just really cool. Anyway, with that being said, I digress. So now that I've gotten my trim pass out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and trim within the border that I've made. So again, the idea here being is safety, right? Because the grass is fairly wet. You can see all the mist I'm kicking out of there as I cut the grass, right? So the last thing I wanna do, oh, let me get that stick right there. Yep, get that out of there. So again, the idea here is safety. Wanna trim out about maybe three, four feet away from the creek. Um, that's why we made that barrier, or that border, I guess would be the best way to say it, earlier is to establish where the grass transitions from slightly wet, not too bad to the point where things can sink, to super wet where we definitely don't want to take the mower because at that point we'd be in the danger zone, right? So as you can see, I made a little outline for myself. Oh, another stick right there. Um, so then that way, as I'm trimming, I don't have to worry about anything getting stuck. I'm all good to go. Just gonna finish trimming over here, get it looking nice and clean along that creek so we don't get stuck. Let me just touch up that corner right there. All right, good. Now, one more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit this area with the trees on the back side of the property because, so one of the things that has happened back here over the last couple of years is neglect, right? This area obviously used to be cut back a little bit further and because we let it get out of control, it creeped up a little bit further onto the backyard. We lost a little bit of the backyard. So what I'm gonna start doing this year, actually with every visit that I make over to grandma's house here, is I'm gonna go ahead and come back here with the trimmer and actually slowly cut this back. As a matter of fact, I actually got some areas in there too that I think we could experiment with with the hedge trimmer that I got from Echo as well, the HCS 2810. So that'll be some fun. We could do a little trailblazing, if you will, in this area. So. Yeah, really excited about that. I'll bring that over here the next time I come on over and film it for you guys. Maybe make a nice little video, little saga out of it on how we're going to slowly bring this back. As a matter of fact, my grandma actually told me that she has some horseshoe pits back here. So consider this a quest to find those little spikes that are popping out of the ground. But yeah, check that out. Look at that trimmer just whacking everything down. It's so satisfying to watch here in the studio. Not gonna lie to you, I'm in here sipping on my morning coffee and there's nothing more satisfying than some early morning trimming to warm up for the mowing. But yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We don't really come back here very often, but it would just be really, really cool to open this up and see what we can do with it and expand the overall potential on this property because we got well over an acre here, folks. We might as well use up all that we can Heck, I should probably put a shed in back here. I don't know if we could do that, but that would be awesome. Little pool barn for my equipment. Grandma, what do you think? <laughs> Let's talk about it. Anyway, so I'm trimming up here, and shortly before, I'm going to get interrupted. Let's check that out. Dude, look at this. This helicopter. See it over there? Look. He's just hovering right there. Dude, that's cool. Look, he's gonna fly over. Oh, dude, come on, that's cool. Yes! Oh, dude, that's awesome. Here, can you, can, can you lift that and throw that one in here? I'll move that, I'll take it up front because I want to cut these up. Which, how many of them? Get that one? Oh yeah. Okay, put it in there. And that one next to it. And I can, because I'd like the great, you know, I can start growing it. That's good, you're breaking that up, then I can cut some of that stuff. That's, whoop, I didn't have to do that. Oh, that's all good. All right. I th here, 
I, I'm gonna be a pain in the ass. Give me those two little ones. You didn't have to. That I appreciate you coming today. Well, it's supposed to. It's supposed to rain this week, and I didn't want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know anymore. I know. All right, how many you need? You're gonna take all these up there and cut them? No, well, just one other one, and then this way we got uh, that one that's laying up there. I won't be able to move this one no, down what's, now. what's nice about this now is that we'll be able to, with every visit, I could just cut back yeah, further. Uh -huh. that's, that's the idea. Yeah. She's strong. Mm -hmm. what, are you, yeah. what are you, 74 now? No, we've got another kick in your ass. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Can you get it or do you yeah, want me to bring it back? <laughs> I mean, I could do it, but. All right, ready? I don't want to get dirty. Uh, see what I had to do because it's so wet? I had to trim like four feet out. Now it is time for everybody's favorite part, and that is time to mow. As you can see, I'm rocking the 54-inch Toro Titan here that I got from my friends over at Lawn Tools last fall, which, by the way, Lawn Tools, if you're watching this, Jordan and Left Tool, thank you guys so much for delivering this mower. Sincerely appreciate it. All the way down from Arkansas. Great guys over there. Anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm doing my first initial pass here along the side parkway. The idea here is I gotta do two things, right? Number one, I gotta keep the grass for the most part off the neighbor's property. And number two, wanna keep it off the cars because it is a little wet here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little outline, right? I did one along the driveway. Now I'm doing one along the property line here. I'm just gonna go over that pass again to break down those clippings because I don't wanna push those into the car for our next pass, which you'll see in a minute. So as you can see, I'm going up. And what I'm gonna do in just a second here is I'm gonna come on down. Yeah, right? Just coming on down. Riding the freaking line. Riding the wave, if you will. Well, I wouldn't call it a wave, but riding the stripes, yeah. So we're gonna do our third pass here, pushing the grass away. Yeah, look at that. Looking good. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like Geek to Freak. I love this style. I can see why he loved making videos like this, where you just get to sit in here and watch your footage and kind of react to it in the moment. But anyways, you see I did that pass right there just to keep the grass away from, you know, the cars for the most part. And then the grass that did go onto the neighbor's property, I did take the liberty of going on over there and breaking all that stuff up. Now, anyway, here's where we really get into things with this particular property. So where we are right now is the main section of the lawn right by the pool. Now, one of the things you'll notice as we progress through this lawn here is that the entire thing differs in composition depending on where we're at in the lawn. So this area we're in here has what I would say moderate competition with trees and because of that it's a little shorter, a little more thin and on top of that we also get a lot of foot traffic, right? So it is a little patchy up here and we do have some dandelions in here that we need to get in here and spray. So I'll be doing that in an upcoming video here very shortly. But in the meantime, as you can see again, just very thin over here. Now here's an example of an area that has dense, dense competition with trees. Like this is my grandma's front parkway here and there's nothing but trees in the section right next to it. And because of that, this area does have a little bit of a struggle trying to get started, right? It has a lot of competition as far as sunlight, as far as root competition and all that. So it's really, really hard to actually get this area to pop out. But for the most part, looks pretty good, right? All we gotta do is just come in here and maybe do a seeding and give these areas a little extra love, considering that we have some bigger trees. Now, one of the things you'll see in a second here is going to be the other sections of the lawn, the super, super thick areas, which is right here. Well, this is the front lawn right here that I'm actually doing a little pass on here real quick. The front lawn needs a little work. You see that big dirt area right there? That's an example of an area that doesn't really get a lot of sun. Actually had a lot of clover right there, killed all that off. Uh, ground ivy, actually, I don't know why I said clover, but killed all that off, and now we got a bunch of bare dirt right there. Gonna have to do a seeding right there at some point as well. So as you can see, looking pretty good for the most part. Now, finishing that up, 
And this is where we really get into the meat of things right here. So this area of the lawn, this is the longest, thickest part of the whole thing. It's actually my favorite part. We're on the far side of the house right now. And as you can see, we're shooting a lot of grass out of there. We got some dandelions here too, albeit not as many as other areas, but it looks really, really good over here. This is my favorite section of the lawn. Now, one of the questions that might come up from a lot of people is going to be mow height. Jake, what do you mow this lawn at, especially considering the fact that it differs in composition depending on where you're at in the lawn. Well, if I'm in a tall, thick area for this first cut, I like to cut it around three inches at the most. Whereas when I get to the areas that are a little bit thin and struggling, I like to take that down to about two and a half, even two inches in some cases to actually jumpstart and stimulate that growth. So there you go. You could see me doing a little stripe in action there. Now we are taking quite a bit off because this is the first cut and I am a little bit late here but that's okay, we got a little method for that in a minute. In the meantime, let's enjoy the striping, shall we? It was a beautiful day too. Made the stripes really show. All right, so now that we've gotten our cut down, what I'm doing is I'm coming over with the blower and I'm actually going to use that to clear out any clumpy areas in this thick section right here because the last thing you want to do are, is leave clumps on the lawn in any situation if you can help it because when you leave the clumps on there that can choke things out and thin out the lawn so make sure you get out there with a blower and blow all that off kind of like I'm doing right here again only if it's viable for you if not you might have to wait a little bit and come out the next day with your bagger and suck all those dry clumps up but yeah Using your blower on the clumps, highly recommend it. And on top of that, always being smart and cleaning your equipment off, like I'm doing here. Yep, then just blow off the driveway, and bam, you are done. All right, there we go. All done, back and front and all the sides. Got it trimmed, as you can see. Our little four foot swath that we decided to do to stay out of the creek worked out pretty well so feel free to use that whenever you want i guess we could say it works it also looks really clean i might even do that just for the heck of it it was it was fun it was good exercise for sure and then toro titan stripes this is one cut not two cuts but one you see i'm lucky i got to it earlier than I usually do. Last year I was in school, so it was harder, but this year, now that I've graduated, I have a little more time, uh, with college courses and all that, that I can actually come out here and mow this lawn whenever I want to, which is kind of cool. So I decided to come over here on a Wednesday morning, beautiful Wednesday morning that is, as you can see, looking really good. Now, I did get a little cocky on my way here. I was supposed to stop and get gas, but I didn't. I was like, eh, I got enough in the mower. I'll be all right. But I just had enough. Listen, I ended up running out right here. Thank God I got the mower <laughs> across the bridge, right? And I was thinking, oh no, my gas cans are probably empty, right? I run back to the trailer, I cross my fingers, I check one of my gas cans, and fortunately I have like this much in there. So it was enough to finish cutting that part. Hopefully it's enough to put it back in the trailer. But uh, anyway, there's that. As you can see, our first official filmed that is lawn striping of the season plenty more of that came from folks plenty more make sure you subscribe if you haven't by the way what are you doing a lot of fun here anyway yeah looking good